Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of college algebra and trigonometry. All material has an assumed prerequisite of both Algebra 1, which is elementary algebra, and Algebra 2, which is intermediate algebra. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This lecture is a continuation, strangely enough, even though it doesn't look like it, of graphing the transformations of functions. Somewhere in here, it kind of is important to talk about uh, even and odd functions. And the reason why is because you use a lot of symmetry when you graph as you enter into calculus. And so part of that symmetry is with odd and even functions. You should have seen this in your prerequisite Algebra 2 course, but we're going to go ahead and just review a couple things here. So the very first thing we're going to review is an even function. A function is called even if for every input x, f of x is equal to f of negative x. So a lot of students see that and they say, oh, so, you know, you plug in negative x and it disappears. Actually, it really should be written that way, by the way. It should be written the other way, like f of negative x is equal to f of x. Most people do write it that way. And you will also see it, uh, well, I'll talk about the odd in a moment, but that's at least this is the way most people work with even functions. You know a function's even if when you plug in the opposite of x, it's the same thing as had you just plugged in regular old x. I'll give you an example. Uh, I'll give examples of this as we move forward. But just a little reminder. Since f of x is equal to f of negative x, and we just reviewed the effect of a negative on the interior of your function that rotates your graph about the y-axis. Well, since the graph rotated about the y-axis, uh, let me actually zoom out a little bit. So if you have a graph of a function and when you rotate it about the y-axis, if it ends up looking just like the regular function, then it must be symmetric about the y-axis. And that's exactly what that next sentence says. The graph of an even function is symmetric about the y-axis. So a function is called odd if for every input of x, the following is true. Now, I copied down, I guess, what the author would write, but that's not how I would write it, honestly. I would say it's a function is called odd if f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. Don't get me wrong, these two do mean the same thing, but uh, it's traditionally written this way right here. So a function's odd if when you plug in a negative x to it, it ends up being the same as had you had the negative of f of x. And that is a little bit weird. So let's, let's visually think about this. I have a function and the graph of the function when I rotated about the y-axis is the same as had I rotated the original function about the x-axis. Well, let's take a few examples. Take this guy right here. If you rotate it about the y-axis, it ends up looking just like it does right now. Is that the same as had you rotated about the x-axis? Oh, absolutely not. It's not the same at all. So that's not an example of it. Let's take a different one. Let's uh, let's take something like, which is, I'm gonna graph something that's not a function, by the way, but it's just worthwhile to take it into consideration. Let's take a look at, uh, actually I will go ahead and graph something like this. If I were to rotate this about the y-axis, is it the same as having rotated about the x-axis? Well, absolutely not. There's no way. If you rotate it about the y-axis, you get this blue curve if you rotate that about the x-axis, you'll get this red curve and they're, the blue and the red curve are not the same. So again, that is not an odd function. However, if you consider the following function, if you were to rotate that about the y-axis, 
is it the same as having rotated about the X axis? Well, let's go ahead and rotate about the Y axis. Actually, I'll draw that rotation in blue. If you rotate this curve about the Y axis, you get the following. That's what you get if you rotate the black curve about the Y axis. Now, had you rotated the black curve about the X axis, you would get the following which is the same exact curve. So that black curve is an odd function. And we call that symmetric about the origin because if you had just stuck a pin in the origin and spun this curve or this function about the origin 180 degrees, you get the same exact picture. And that is exactly what would happen if a function was symmetric about the, sorry, that'd be, that was, is what would happen if you had rotated the function about the y-axis versus rotating about the x-axis. They'd be the same graph. So anyway, that's called symmetric about the origin. I just confused myself when I said it that way, but that's what it is. Mechanically, it just means f of negative x equals negative f of x. So when you're dealing with functions and you want to determine whether they're even or they are odd, the rule of thumb here is if you don't have a graph, well then plug a negative X into your function and see what happens. If it turns out that negative disappears and it becomes the regular old function again, it's even. If it turns out when you plug in negative X that it, after a little bit of simplification, it becomes the opposite of the original function, then it's odd. That's the rule of thumb. So let's go ahead and maybe take an example here um, or two. I think I have a couple. So let's go ahead and do this. Determine if the function is even, odd, or neither. And let me also just take a moment to say the reason why you're learning this because it makes graphing a little bit easier. If you know a function is, for example, odd, then all you need to really do is graph half of it. If I know the function's odd, I can graph this half right here. And once I'm done graphing that half, then I will visualize rotating it about the origin so I can copy the rest of the graph. So it's, it's basically half the work. Same thing if a function is even. If a function is even, which I think I erased, oh no, I have it right there. If a function's even, like the parabola is, then again, all I really need to do is graph half the function. Once I have that half, I could just use the symmetry about the origin to graph the other half. And that's why having an, an idea of whether a given function is odd or even before you start graphing, it can be very powerful if used appropriately. A lot of people kind of skip it, um, but I think it's incredibly powerful and it's super important in calculus. So, and that's my goal is to get everybody who watches these, vid these videos into calculus and beyond. And then you become math majors, then you can be very happy with your life, and then you uh, get a wonderful career, and you enjoy the world and life around you, and you take nobody seriously because everything is false except for mathematics. Uh, but that's a longer road. So anyway, determine if the function is even, odd, or neither. As I mentioned earlier, the very first step in determining whether a function's even or odd is just plug in a negative x. See what happens. So everywhere that I have an X in that picture, I'll plug in a negative X. And then you simplify. Always after you do that, you just say simplify here. So simplify, that'll imply F of negative X is equal to, well, three times negative one, the absolute value of it is one. So that's just gonna be the absolute value of X. The negative disappears because the absolute value of a negative doesn't matter. Minus, a negative x being squared, well, we know that that's going to be an x squared. And then plus 1. Notice that our result is identical to the original function. Therefore, f of negative x is equal to f of x. And by definition, that implies f is even. All right. So that's... How you go about it? Just kind of put that stuff together, evaluate f of negative x. Let's go ahead and try another one. 
determine if the function is same instructions. I don't need to really repeat them, but notice I'm changing the function name a little bit just because I get tired of F being the function name. It gets picked on so much. So I'm doing a T of S. Well, again, evaluate T of negative S. So that's a negative negative S times the absolute value of a negative S minus a negative S being cubed. A lot of cleanup required here. Negative, negative. Well, that's just positive, so I can write that as a regular old positive S. By the way, I'm, I should say this implies via simplification. Uh, let's supposed to say simplify. Uh, so that's S times the absolute value of, well, the absolute value of a negative number here, that's positive, so that's just gonna be the absolute value of S itself. And then minus, that's gonna be a negative, one times s cubed. I didn't have to write it that way. You, is, you are at a level now that you know that's gonna be a positive s cubed, but I just thought I'd take my time with it. So it's s times the absolute value of s plus s cubed. Now, if you look at the original function, it's not this, but it's close. If you were to maybe factor a negative off of these, maybe, so uh, let's see if that's gonna be the opposite. That's the opposite of, so if I just factor a negative off of the first term and the second term, uh, which you would say, oh, there's not a negative there. You're right, there isn't. But if you divide both those terms by a negative, you're left with a negative S absolute value of S minus S cubed. You could double check my math, distribute that negative back through and you'll see you get a positive S times the absolute value of s plus s cubed. So it is, these two things are the same. So now we note that this is actually equal to the opposite of the original function. Our original function was negative s, absolute value of s minus s cubed, and that's exactly what this is. So that's the opposite of the original function. And that tells us that our function T is odd. Very powerful for graphing purposes. That means that, and this is not the graph of it, but just pretend for a moment. That means that if we were to be able to graph one side of it, and if it looked like this, then we know the other side must look like that. It's just via symmetry. Okay, so it's uh, symmetric about the origin. So that's just a heads up that you would only have to graph half of it and then copy the other half by rotating it 180 degrees. And the way you would do that with, with, with a piece of paper is to rotate the piece of paper 180 degrees and uh, you would see the uh, other branch of your curve. So as short as that may seem, that's all I really wanna talk about with odd and even functions. It's just enough that you, you know how to operate with them, how to prove that something's odd or something is even that's critical. You also should know that there are a lot of functions that just are neither odd nor even. So if you worked with a function, let's say f of x is equal to x cubed plus x squared or something like that, and you were to try to prove that's odd or even, you'd run into an issue fairly quickly. Let's see, plus a negative x being squared. And if you simplify this, you get a negative x cubed plus x squared, which is not the original function, but all is not lost. Maybe it's the opposite of the original function. So you say, well, let me factor a negative off those two terms. And you're left with a positive x cubed, so far so good, but minus x squared, which is not, not what this is. So uh, this is neither odd nor even. And to be honest with you, that's more common to have a function that's neither odd nor even than it is to have a function that's odd or a function that is even. Anyhow, very powerful for graphing. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are.
until you feel at peace. Listen close, don't talk too much, that isn't kosher. You may really hurt inside, it doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry. 